This is Healthy Souls with Father Nicholas Lowe, helping you to live a Christ-filled life in today's world. Father Nicholas is the pastor of St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. So let's get started with this morning's homily. Several weeks ago, we began a brand new sermon series entitled The Hall of Famers. And if you look in almost every facet of society, whether it be in music or if it's in entertainment or if it's in sports, there's this institution that allows us to honor people who go above and beyond, people that heard God's voice and took their God's purpose, the gifts that they gave them, that he gave them, and made a difference in this world. They utilize their talents to set themselves apart. In many ways, though, we also have a hall of fame in our own faith. They are people, the saints of our church, who heard God tell them, don't settle when I've asked you to be better. They heard people, God telling them not only should they be living in this world, but they're called to be athletes for Christ. And I think many of those Hall of Famers, these saints of our church, would be telling all of us, study how we became members of the Hall of Fame of Faith so that you can know how to be a member of the Hall of Fame of Faith in your day. Study how we lived our life so that you can know how to live your life. And over the last several weeks, we've been highlighting the saints that the church puts into place on the Sundays of Lent. And today I want to bring out another one, another Hall of Famer. His name is St. John. But I'm not talking about St. John Chrysostom, who puts together our divine liturgy. I'm not talking about St. John the Baptist, or for that matter, St. John uh, the, um, the Divine, our patron saint of our church family. I'm talking about another John. He was born in 579 in Palestine. And at a young age, this John was extraordinarily talented, very gifted academically. So much so that many people had thoughts of him going into doing great things in the field of government and education. But at the age of 16, John desired to be close to God. So much so that he would join a monastery in what is called St. Catherine's Monastery in Egypt. There he grew in his faith. There he inspired people. He was so gifted in his walk of faith that that not only were people that were visiting the monastery be inspired by him, but also the other monks. Because what he did so great was not only did he come to church and listen to the liturgy, he lived the liturgy. He didn't just hear a message, he did the message. He applied his faith in his everyday life. One day, one of the monks comes up to him and says, John, The people in this monastery need some practical ways to apply their faith. Can you write down on paper what you oftentimes tell us in words of how to apply our faith? At first, John was a little bit reluctant, but then he began to put pen to paper and began to write these different ways, these different steps, if you will, to help guide people towards heaven. Over time, he would write these 30 steps, using in his mind an analogy of a ladder, taking from Jacob's ladder in the Old Testament. Different steps one could take as they're ascending to heaven, as they're living their life the way God wants them to live. And as he put together these steps, time, step after step of what they would do, the people loved it. So much so that on the fourth Sunday of Lent, we have honored him for 1,500 years. His name is St. John Climacus. The word Climacus means ladder. St. John of the ladder. And I think if this Hall of Famer was to speak to all of us today, I think he would say this. If you don't take a step towards God's purpose in your walk of faith, the devil will cause you to slip and follow the failures he has planned in your walk of life. If you don't take a step towards God, he's going to cause you to slip. If you don't take the step, he'll cause you to slip. Let me show you how John used this. He said that one of the main ways that we slip off of this this ladder is through the vices. Let me give you some of them. He said one way that you can slip is if, if you remember people's mistakes. If you keep dwelling on what someone did in the past, you're gonna slip off the ladder. Another one he says is if you go around in life always talking about people. If you're focusing on what people have said or what you're saying about them, negative things, you're going to slip off the ladder. He said another one is that if you go around being impatient, 
you're going to slip off the ladder. You get my point. There's a lot of different ways to slip off that ladder. What are some of the ways that you're slipping off the ladder today? What are some areas that John would say, are you taking the step or are you causing yourself to slip? And what I want to encourage all of you today is every day is a choice that you and I are making. In many ways, the devil is at a, menu, is at a dinner right now. And on the menu is you. And he is yearning and desiring to give you a meal that's going to cause you to slip off the ladder of faith. And I just want to encourage you, take the step. How do we do that? Well, I think there's three major steps that all of us need to make today. Here's number one. We need to take the first step by sitting next to God. By sitting next to God. If there's one weapon that you should know that the devil is always going to give you is this. I call it the weapon of mass distraction. The devil loves it when you are busy. Because if you're so busy in life, you cannot spend time getting to the giver of life. You can't take the step if you're so busy in this life. And I want you to hone in on the letters of the word busy. This is going to be something that hopefully all of you will leave here with. B-U-S-Y. B-U-S-Y. B. Bound. U. Under. S. Satan. Y. Yoke. When we are busy, we are bound under Satan's yoke. And you all need to recognize that if you're in this world so busy, what God is saying through John Clemicus is, can you please get to the first step? Can you take that step and come sit next to me? John Clemicus puts it this way. He says, faith gives you the wings to soar to the kingdom of heaven. Some of us just need to do that. How do we do that? Some of us need to spend more time talking to God and listening to God. Some people tell me all the time, Father Nick, I just feel like I'm a little bit far from God. Read my lips, everyone. Guess who moved? You are as far from God as you choose to be. Why don't you just come sit next to him and pray to him? Why don't you take some time to simply read the Bible? Don't be like the 87% of Christians who do not even read their Bibles every day. Every day I've got to take time to read about him. St. Theophon the Recluse, he says it this way, if you're not praying and fasting, guess what? There the demons are. Like he tells us, sit next to him by praying, by fasting, by reading about him. Here's number two. If I sit next to God, if I'm taking this step as I'm coming up this ladder, I need to also stand firm and stand up to the enemy, to the devil. Part of Christianity, yes, friends, is communion with each other. We love it when we're all at church and we go to coffee hour and we love to spend each other's time with each other. That's all great. Part of that is communion with God. But just you should all know that it's not just about communion with God, it's confrontation with the enemy. It's communion and confrontation. And the Bible says this, submit yourselves to the Lord. Take the next step by resisting the devil. And I just want to encourage you that one of the greatest ways that you can resist him is through the word discernment. In fact, St. John Climacus says it's the mother of all virtues. What is discernment? It is allowing yourself to discern if what I'm doing is taking a step up or, taking, or causing me to slip down. Let me give you some questions you can always ask yourself. Before you do anything negative, let me tell you something. God will give you a warning sign. You may not turn the volume up, but every time, God will give you a warning sign. Sometimes we just turn it off and simply feed the flesh. But a great question that you should ask yourself is, what I'm about to say is what I'm about to think. Does it lead me to God, or does it lead me away from Him? Would God want me to do this, or would He not? Does it line up with the commandments? Does it line up with the Beatitudes? Does it teach me to be patient, kind, forgiving? If not, listen to me, church family, you've got to learn this. Get behind me, Satan. 
you're going to cause me to slip. In your worship guide this morning, we gave you an icon. It's an icon of the ladder of divine ascent so that you could see visually how the devil and all his angels are yearning to slip you from God's purpose in your life. You've got to be looking out for that. Allow yourself to simply discern. Here's number three. We sit next to him. We stand firm against the devil. And number three is we take the next step. We climb the next step. I love how St. John Climacus leaves his message with all of us. He says, my brothers and sisters, climb to the next step. Climb to the next step. It's almost imploring us to climb the next step. Never stop climbing. And some of us have not been climbing in our knowledge of Christ. Some of us are in the same exact spiritual place we were a year ago. Some of us in our own marriages were at the same exact place. Our relationship with our children, it's the same exact place. A great way to check this out is if your New Year's resolution is the same year after year, can I tell you something? You're not climbing. And what he's telling us is maybe all of us today need to say, I'm going to take the next step to better my marriage. Take the next step to learn more about who you are. Take the next step to better my relationship in this church and with my family. I need to ascend, ascend. I leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with another man whose name is John. John, the, what I'm talking about, uh, lived in the 1400s. And this, jo this John was someone who loved God, was also a very smart person. He loved to read. But he also loved to play with gadgets. And he would sit there all the time and just simply put different gadgets together to kind of produce different kind of inventions. And he just loved to do this. It's so much so that he had this idea, because he loves to read, that what would it look like if he simply put together a machine that would mass produce a certain book or multiple books. He started to put these little diff different gadgets together, started to read different ways that he could do this. And eventually, in the mid-1400s, he would create what is called today the Gutenberg Press. The very first book that was published by the Gutenberg Press in Europe was the Bible. He was a man of faith. But do you know the very first book that was mass-produced in this new world? The very first book that was ever published in this Western Hemisphere is The Ladder of Divine Ascent. Antonio Mendoza, not an Orthodox, knew that the very first book that would be published in the Western Hemisphere would shape the entire Western world. And he knew that that book that he would publish, that he would mass produce, had the power to change people's lives. This book, written by St. John Climacus, is all about these 30 steps that one takes to ascend into heaven. And can I just encourage you all that maybe we all need to mass produce the ladder of divine ascent in our own lives. That maybe we need to mass produce it by all taking the first step to come and sit next to Christ. That maybe all of us need to mass produce in every facet of our life to stand up to the devil. That we all need to mass produce by taking the next step. Because if you don't take the next step towards God's purpose for your life, the devil will cause you to slip to follow his purpose for your life. If you're not taking a step, he's going to cause you to slip. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to join Father Nick and his wife, Dr. Roxanne Lowe, on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month for their Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls call-in show at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Ancient Faith Talk.